Y'all, it's that time of year. It's stew season. It's hearty soup season. It's chili season. Guys, I've done the chili. I've done the soup. Now it's time to make that stew. We got a beef stew going down in the Ninja Foodie today. Guys, I'm gonna wanna miss this one. First thing I did, and it's gonna take the most time, is get your mise en place ready to go. I mean, get everything cut up, chopped up, in its place, ready to roll. That seems to be, so far, the hardest part of this recipe. Well, the first thing I did was I chopped up my carrots. I got them close to little one inch size cubes. We them relatively even so the the thinner part of the carrot i chopped up and then i went ahead as it got thicker cut that part in half and then continued to slice along i used three you know regular size carrots okay i peeled them i washed them all that good stuff next up we got the celery same thing i pulled them off the stock got them washed up we chopped off the ends because no one wants the ends actually come to think about it most people don't even want the celery a lot of people don't like celery i bet you didn't know that but anyway, and then we, you know, sliced them up. So we did about five stalks of those. We chopped up a whole onion. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, finely diced. Uh, just, you know, medium, medium dice. Don't overthink it. All this stuff is getting pressure cooked. All right. It's going to, you know, kind of meld into the stew. Don't overthink your chopping. But... You gotta chop, okay? So we got some mushrooms going in. I'm only using a little bit of mushrooms. Not a huge fan of them, but I feel like they do belong in the stew. So we got about a half a cup of them and we diced them up pretty, you know, pretty small. Potatoes, we're using those mini Yukon gold potatoes. Now I'm using those on purpose. They're a nice starchy uh, potato, okay? And they'll help thicken up that stew. All right, now we're gonna use some flour and all that to help thicken it up, but we're adding a little bit more with the starches out of that potato. And it becomes a nice creamy soft bite as you're eating it, all right? So I cut those up into, you know, all the veggies are trying to be about the same size. So if one of those mini potatoes were a little bit bigger, I cubed it in the fours. If it was a little smaller, I just cut it in half. Again, don't overthink it, you know? You just wanna keep them around the same size, okay? Garlic. We have six cloves of garlic that I pressed into, uh, um, use a little, you know, garlic press, got them in a little dish over here. I don't know if I filmed that. I don't think I filmed that. Just gonna have to trust me. It is actually fresh garlic. All uh, those jarred garlic haters out there, we're using fresh garlic this time, okay? So you can just ease back. How about give me a thumbs up for the fresh garlic for all those jarred garlic haters out there. I'm gonna put the ingredients and in prep down below. So you, you don't really have to keep along if you don't want to. Um, there's a lot going on. Quite a few ingredients, couple steps, okay? So just, just roll with it. All right, just, you know, just hang out with me. We're talking, we're having a good time, right? Let's go ahead and get started with uh, prepping our meat. I got a chuck roast that was already cubed up. I bought it from the, the grocery store that way, which is fine with me. It's about three pounds. And uh, we're gonna dredge it in a little flour, a little seasoning, all right? I'm using a little seasoning salt from my, uh, my buddy Uncle Steve Shake, called Lucky Shake. If you don't have it, use some Lowry's, use some salt, pepper, garlic mix in there, okay? Just season your meat, all right? Now, I just use barbecue rubs because, look, I have a ton of it around the house. You know, I have a lot of good relationships with a lot of barbecue seasoning companies out there. So that's what I, that's why I use them mostly in my, even in my home dishes, okay? But if you don't have these, you know, these barbecue rubs, there's a link below if you want them. If not, a little salt, a little garlic powder, and a little pepper, and you're right as rain. Whew. That's a lot of work to get through, all right? But we got more to do. We are using our Ninja Foodie One lid, okay? It's the six quart, six and a half quart. If you do not have the Ninja Foodie, this works for the Instapot too. So if you're not cool like me and you don't have that Ninja Foodie One lid, well, hey, there's a link down below for it. But you can use your Instapot or whatever Ninja Foodie you got. <laughs> I think I covered everything. Feeling pretty good today. Might be the beer. Half of it's gone into the recipe, half of it's gone into me, so. Good times out there. All right, let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> Y'all, we're over here on the Ninja Foodie Station. Okay, we got our three pounds of uh, chuck already cut up. I put it in a bag already. We're gonna put a half a cup of flour in there. Now what this is gonna do, we're gonna get everything coated in there and we're gonna brown it off in the foodie using the sear saute. Gonna pour in uh, about a tablespoon of the Lucky Shake. We'll save that. We may use that a little bit later to season everything up. A little bit more, well, you know, we always taste for seasoning as we go. So let's seal this up and then get it all tossed around. You wanna get all the meat covered with the flour and the seasoning. Beef chunks are all covered in flour and seasoning. Turned it on, we're gonna use the air fry stove top function here. We're gonna move the knob to the sear saute. High is fine, we're gonna hit start. Oh, boop -de -doop. Hit it twice. We come over here to the pot. We're gonna brown up our meat chunks in this Wagyu beef tallow. This is very good. It's gonna add a 
bunch of flavor to the stew. But if you do not have this, you know, vegetable oil will work just fine. You got some uh, leftover bacon grease in there. That'll work just fine. If you want the Wagyu beef tallow, I'll have a link down below for it. We're gonna use a couple tablespoons full. This is gonna add just a, that certain, you know, unctuousness. It's add a, you know, a lot of extra rich flavor to our stew. Get that all mixed up and melted down. Get our meat in there. Ow, that splashed up. May have bit me a little bit there. Get that all mixed up with that Wagyu fat. And we're just gonna start browning all sides, okay? By browning up all the sides, okay, we're gonna help develop the flavor in here. Uh, with this stew, we're, you know, layering up the flavors. We wanna make sure everything tastes good all the way through. Browning all the sides, you know, adds that caramelization, adds that good flavor, that dark, deep richness that we're looking for. I'm gonna do all sides. I'm not gonna keep it on camera here that, you know, we're doing all sides, but I'll show you when I'm done with them. Guys, we're moving and grooving on our browning of the meat here, but that's what I'm talking about. You want to get that good browning on all sides as best as possible. We're going to stir this around and just, you know, pretty much till we're done seeing any kind of pink on the meat. And then uh, we'll start adding everything else in. Meat is looking nice and browned up and lovely. I'm going to put all my onions in now, okay? I really want these to kind of disappear into the meat, flavor up that meat. So when we pressure cook them, we're just gonna be getting the flavor out of them and not really have such the big chunks of uh, onion in there. Okay, I'm okay with the big chunks of the potatoes and the celery and carrots, but I want my onion to cook down, okay? If you like, you know, chunky onions in your stew, then wait till we add the vegetables to do this. But for me, I'd rather get these, uh, you know, kind of cooked into the meat, okay? Let that go for a few more minutes. I'm gonna add our garlic in. Get that mixed in and worked around, let it cook for a couple minutes. And by all means, if you want more garlic, you know, knock yourself out. For me, the six cloves I think is pretty good. Guys, the smells going on in here, dude. Insane. You can smell the flavor, baby. <laughs> okay, guys, time to add in our beer. We'll hear it kind of calm down a little bit. One for uh, one for the stew, one for me. Mm. Tasty, baby. All right, let's go in with the two cups of beef stock. Now I have more stock sitting on the side over there just in case we need to add a little bit more. It gets a little too thick or whatever. But for the most part, these three cups of liquid should do just fine. You can see it already thickening up in there a bit, right? Let's go ahead and get this pressure cooking happen. I'm gonna turn off the sear saute, shut this down. Let's go ahead and move this slide over and lock it down. We want it on high. Timing, we want 25 minutes. Got our valve sealed up over here. So when it comes with the pressure, we're good. There, 25, okay. Hit start, let it come up to pressure. It's very hot in there, so it should come up to pressure relatively quickly. Once it gets done doing the first pressure cook on this, we're gonna do a, a quick release, okay? Don't stress, just do it, okay? I hate I hate the, psh, you know, whatever. It gets me every time, but let's just, let's just, Let's pull that bandaid off together. We'll do a quick release, okay? At that point, we'll go ahead and add all those vegetables in, get it all mixed up, get some extra flavors going that we're gonna add in, right? Shut it down, give it another five minutes on the pressure cook. We'll be serving it up, eating good in the neighborhood, baby. All right, come on back. Uh, this, is, this is the worst part for me. We're gonna release the pressure. It's been the 25 minutes. Ah! It gets me every time. All the pressure's been released. Let's slide that lever over. Let's open the lid, be careful. It's still hot and steamy in there. All right. Some nice looking stew right there. How about some nice looking meat? How about that? It's not quite stew yet. All right, let's go in with the potatoes. Carefully, <laughs> carefully add the veggies in. All that stuff in there is hot. Got our celery, our carrots going in, mushrooms those mixed up and the vegetables are going to release you know their own bit of water in there too okay so it's pretty thick right now and we may have to add a little beef stock in there okay but right now we're going to trust the process right and uh get all those veggies cooked and then make a call on what we want to do all right for the seasoning of the mix in there we're going to go in with a little w sauce a little worcestershire sauce Going with a couple tablespoons a bit, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, and add a little hot sauce in there. This is totally optional. 
but you know, I use my buddy Mel's dark side of the grill hot sauce, okay? About a half a tablespoon or so. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit more of that Lucky Shake in there, because we added a lot more veggies in there that need to be seasoned up. Maybe another tablespoon or so. Put that all around real quick. Some great colors in there, all right? Let's get the shut down. We'll start the next round of pressure cook. We move the pressure valve back over to the seal position. We're gonna lock our lid again, all right? High, we wanna go five minutes on there, okay? One more, there we go. Then we're gonna hit start. Guys, it might take a hot minute to come up the pressure again. So just relax, let it do its thing. Five minutes is all you're gonna need. Right now, the veggies have already started cooking because you know they're in that hot liquid. It's already going, okay? So that five minutes should be more than enough and we're gonna have nice tender vegetables, okay? Relatively soft, so you know, they're gonna go with that tender meat. Take that big bite, right? Almost done. I'm glad you stuck with me thus far. Hit the thumbs up, right? Subscribe if you haven't. All right, all that good YouTube stuff. Comment down below what's your favorite thing to make when it starts getting cold and those fall leaves start changing colors and all that crap. Stuff that doesn't happen in Southern California, I guarantee you it's 80 freaking degrees outside right now. But that's okay, that's okay. We still like a hearty stew here in Southern California. <laughs> all right, come on back. <laughs> We're done. Let's go ahead and uh, open this bad boy up. The pressure, I already released it. I didn't think we needed a double dose of, you know, CJ having a heart attack on camera. So it's just chilling right now. Let's open it up. Take a look, what do you say? All right, come down here. All right, guys, there we go. Looking lovely and luscious. So it's still got a little thickness in there, but it's also not quite just like, just socked in with thickness. You know, got you can tell it's a little soup, a little stew, right? It's the right amount of flour in there. Get you in closer here. That beautiful like gravy soup mix right there, I guess you call it. Veggies are still intact, but they're nice and tender. So let's go ahead and get this served up and take a bite. Get some of this ladled out into our little soup bowl cup thingy right here. <laughs> I don't know exactly what you call it. Cheers, y'all. It is smug and hot right now. I don't mind telling you. It's hot. <clears throat> Man, that's so good. So damn good. Oh my gosh. It's like a fall winter kind of staple right this is something that's going to warm you up warm your soul and you're just going to love it you you get that hearty beef notes in there uh the little hot sauce in there didn't make it spicy just kind of little little tang no big deal the nice seasoning in there carrots the potatoes are all cooked perfectly they're not mush but you know they're soft enough to eat they're tender they go right along well with that tender beef okay good stuff guys good stuff guys if you want to get yourself one of these ninja one lid foodies i'll have a link down below the affiliate link but it doesn't cost you anything more to use it just helps out your boy get a very teeny small commission off it so <laughs> it's all good uh for knives cutting boards merch all that good stuff i use in my videos put the links there all down below if you want to become a show producer like all these awesome people scrolling in front of me people that love a good hearty stew on a hot southern california day <laughs> <laughs> There's two ways to do it. You can join my Patreon by clicking that link down in the video description or clicking the join button to become a YouTube member. It's right next to the subscribe button, which you should have already hit by now. But other than that, guys, we're done. Listen, guys, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for cooking with CJ. Take care.